नमस्कार अ वॉर्म वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एन इंडियन पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज नवनीता अधिकारी एंड विद मी इज आर एस रघु ब्रिंगिंग ग्लिम्सेज ऑफ द मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शैल ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी रीचेज पैरिस टू होल्ड टॉक्स विद फ्रेंच प्रेसिडेंट इमानुअल माकरॉ आफ्टर कम्पलीटिंग हिज डेनमार्क विजिट सेज फ्रांस इज वन ऑफ इंडिया स्ट्रांगेस्ट पार्टनर्स प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी सेज इंडिया नॉर्डिक समिट इज अ ग्रेट प्लेटफॉर्म टू डिस्कस वेज टू बूस्ट टाइज एंड नॉर्डिक नेशन टर्म्स डेनमार्क विजिट एज प्रोडक्टिव आईपीओ ऑफ लाइफ इंश्योरेंस कोऑपरेशन ऑफ इंडिया वर्थ ट्वेंटी वन थाउजेंड करोड़ रुपीज ओपन फॉर पब्लिक सब्सक्रिप्शन European Union to slap new sanctions on Russia for its military action against Ukraine. North Korea launches suspected ballistic missile towards its eastern waters. India to be official country of honor at upcoming Marshedo film organized alongside Cannes Film Festival in France. In IPL cricket, Royal Challengers Bangalore set a victory target of 174 runs before Chennai Super Kings in Pune. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has reached Paris to hold talks with French President Emmanuel Macron after completing his Denmark visit. In a tweet today Mr Modi said France is one of India's strongest partners. He said both the nations are cooperating in diverse areas. Terming his Denmark visit productive the Prime Minister said in a tweet the programs covered different spheres ranging from diplomatic meetings boosting cultural and commercial linkages and engagement with the indian community mr modi participated in the second india nordic summit at copenhagen in denmark on wednesday the prime ministers of denmark finland iceland sweden and norway also participated in the summit mr modi thanked prime minister met fredriksen and the people of denmark About the second Inter Nordic Summit Mr Modi said this summit gave a great platform to discuss ways to boost ties with the Nordic nations he said the bilateral meetings with Nordic leaders were productive and he is looking forward to work with them in various sectors aimed at furthering prosperity the second Inter Nordic Summit provided an opportunity to review the progress of the Inter Nordic relations since the first summit which was held in 2018 in Stockholm During the summit the prime ministers pledged to continue to deepen cooperation and focus their discussions on key issues related to international peace and security. The Nordic countries reiterated their support for India's permanent membership of a reformed and expanded United Nations Security Council. Prime Minister Modi invited Nordic companies for investing in the blue economy sector especially in Sagarmala project. Mr Modi noted that India's Arctic policy provides a good framework for expansion of India Nordic cooperation in the Arctic region. The Prime Minister invited the sovereign wealth funds of the Nordic countries to invest in the country. Briefing media in Copenhagen India's foreign secretary Vinay Mohan Kavatra said prior to the summit Prime Minister Narendra Modi held bilateral summit meetings with his counterparts from Finland, Iceland, Sweden and Norway. his meetings with four nordic leaders started with his meeting with the with his counterpart from norway where the principal focus of discussion and partnership was on one blue economy and its various facets uh, renewable energy in particular cooperative possibilities in the field of hydroelectric and green hydrogen three the technology and investment ties in this context prime minister invited norwegian pension funds to partner in india's growth story fourth in the health sector in which the two leaders talked about cooperation relating to joint research in vaccines and development of health infrastructure and five cooperation in building and restoring water bodies in india they also talked about continuing cooperation and coordination in the un security council during the indian prime minister's meeting with prime minister of iceland katrin yakob dotter Both leaders discussed ways to further strengthen economic cooperation especially in the sectors of geothermal energy, blue economy, renewable energy, food processing, education including digital universities and culture. The discussions also took place on expediting the India EFTA trade negotiations. 
Foreign Secretary Kawatra said that Mr. Modi also met Prime Minister of Sweden Magdalena Andersson and reviewed the progress made in the bilateral partnership. Prime Minister Shri Modi's second meeting was with his counterpart from Sweden where the principal focus of discussion and cooperation was one on clean technology and sustainable solutions. Uh, this was discussed broadly under two rubrics, one relating to the investments by Sweden in India in clean technology and sustainable solutions and two partnerships in research and innovation in this field, drawing on a successful partnership of under the lead IT program which is the program relating to industrial transition the two leaders also spoke about snt cooperation including polar research and in terms of new areas talked about need to shape new partnership in the field of space arctic research and defense in today's hotspot section we bring you a discussion on significance of prime minister's visit to european nations and nordic summit In conversation are Anil Vadva former diplomat and Manish Anand journalist Prime Minister Narendra Modi is on a three European nation tour just a while back he concluded the second nordic summit with Norway Iceland Finland Denmark and Sweden we know that the first nordic summit was held in stockholm in 2018 and the nordic countries are well known across the world to be the powerhouse of clean technology and also known for innovations ambassador wadwa how do you see the second nordic summit and its significance given that the global challenges are only compounding day after day The first Nordic summit as you rightly mentioned was held in 2018 many years have passed since that event and the world has moved on since then India has brought in a lot of reforms within its economy to cope with the issues of climate change and cutting edge technologies which are fast catching up these relate to the innovation side of technology and renewable energy has made a lot of progress for example in India There is also growing awareness in India of being prepared for combating climate change and the promises that India has made at the COP meeting Glasgow have to be fulfilled in time. India is well on its way to do that but in order to do so it requires technologies which are very important as far as the Nordic countries are concerned because they have achieved a lot in innovation in clean energy, green technologies and education. and therefore this green energy partnership that has been forged with nordic countries will go a long way in mitigating the effects of climate change in india and also prepare india well for the future that is why this second summit which was held today we have seen that there's been an emphasis on climate change and innovative technologies and as well as renewable energy in a major way almost every bilateral that prime minister modi has held with the nordic countries has also stressed the fact that we need to do much more in this field with each other and i see this as very significant going forward because the companies who have accompanied the prime minister in this particular meeting are all well chosen well represented and the 450 odd countries from the nordic states who work in india today and 70 odd premier companies who work in the nordic countries from india are all gearing up to see how they can take advantage of the four main focus areas green technology innovation and digitization energy independence and renewable energy water environment and agriculture and infrastructure transport and services Ambassador Vadva Prime Minister Modi had made a significant remark before the Nordic summit when he said that Indian philosophy of Vasudev Kutumbakam is not about just increasing trade only but uh, it is far more comprehensive with this uh, India is approaching the changing world order do you think that this intense bilateral and multilateral talks that Prime Minister Modi held in the last 3 days is part of india positioning to the changing world order post covid-19 pandemic and also in the times of russian and ukrainian war vasudev kutumbakam is essentially very symbolic phrase that the prime minister has used because he knows that the world is one and unless there is cooperation in this world especially in terms of climate change that there could be disaster for countries around the world especially countries like india which have a large population and heavy demand of urbanization 
which brings in the severe effects of climate change. And in order to combat that, it is necessary that there is cooperation which is forged with countries around the world. Just walking it alone or trying to do things yourself does not work. Similarly, India has a lot to contribute also to the world. And Prime Minister Modi has made it clear that India wants to work with other countries in this journey as it moves forward and wants to take others also along with this journey of prosperity. You are right about pointing out about what is happening post-COVID and what's happened in terms of the situation in Ukraine today. We don't know how long the situation in Ukraine is going to continue, but as long as it continues, the world is getting devastated and uh, resources are being depleted. These are much-needed resources which could be deployed for better causes like climate change. Ambassador Vadva, Prime Minister's another remark is significant when he said that India has a scale and a speed to come up with the world's expectations. If we look that in the context of the disruptions in the global supply chain, because half of the China right now is in lockdown because of the outbreak of COVID-19 there, and uh, the world definitely would be looking for an alternative because of the over-dependence on Chinese has definitely disrupted the supply of critical resources. In that context, Prime Minister Modi's visit to these three nations was uh, definitely heavy with economic agenda. Do you think India has positioned rightly to attract the critical investments in the new technology? Yes, I think that has been the endeavor of the Prime Minister during this visit to project India as a place for investment. He also referred to the fact that nobody should be left out of this market because it's a rapidly growing market, which has all the resources for scaling up technologies. You also rightly pointed out that there has been supply chain disruption, which have been caused due to the situation of COVID, for example, in countries like China. India is an alternative, but uh, to reach the scale of China and to match China, India will have to work hard and do more in terms of the reform process within the country, which it is trying to do. And this is what the Prime Minister was trying to project, that India has the manpower, India has the demographic dividend, and it has the technologies which can be scaled up with the help of Nordic countries. Therefore, he made a pitch for the induction of these technologies into the Indian market where the Nordic countries could also benefit and their businesses could also benefit. Ambassador Vadva, if we move a little backward, because in the first two days, Prime Minister Modi had intense bilateral talks with the German Chancellor. That was the first after his election. That was also heavy with the economic agenda. But uh, we see that uh, the Ukrainian war did cast its shadow and the European countries appear to be expecting uh, Prime Minister Modi to influence Russia to end this war. But India has consistently reiterated its position that dialogue should be the way out. How do you think that India will meet up with the expectations of the European countries? As far as influencing Russia is concerned, I think Prime Minister Modi made it very clear that he's spoken on a number of occasions to both sides, Russia as well as Ukraine, because he said that at the end of the war, there are no winners. Everybody is a loser. And that is why the path that India has chosen of diplomacy and negotiations as a way to resolve this conflict and bring an end to the conflict as quickly as possible is the only sane way forward. This is something which was reiterated once again in his interactions with various European leaders. But I think as far as India's stand is concerned, that's been made pretty clear over the last few weeks, starting from the United Nations General Assembly and then in various statements of the spokesperson and our ministers and high dignitaries that we have a desire to see this conflict stop as soon as possible. And secondly, that the solution will be found only through diplomatic means. And I think the world does understand where India is coming from. Ambassador Vadva, Indo-Pacific also figured in the talks. And in that context, when Prime Minister Modi said that the international order is based on the United Nations Charter, and that is rules-based respecting the territorial sovereignty. So do you think that the Indian Pacific mansion in the European tour is uh, significant because of the developments that we see in the South China Sea and the maritime disruptions we come across? We know that the established world order is being disturbed through the aggressive actions of China in the South China Sea. Many of these islands have been occupied and populated and armed, and China has actually used grey zone tactics to stop legitimate activities like fishing, etc., of the claimants in these islands. 
The 9-9 of China, which was promulgated some years ago, was rejected by the International Court. China has rejected that ruling and therefore it is clear that it does not want to abide by the principles of the United Nations. In this scenario, it is important that all like-minded countries, especially democracies, come together and they reiterate once again the rule of law and the belief in the UN Charter. And this is why this issue has figured during this trip, because like India, all the European countries believe in the rule of law and the fact that what is happening in South China Sea is blatant aggression. Ambassador Wadhwa, you gave your insight. Thank you so much uh, for talking to us. Thank you very much. Prime Minister Modi said India remains committed to meeting the needs of the poorest and the most vulnerable by building the next generation infrastructure to realize their aspirations. In a video message at the fourth edition of the International Conference on Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, Mr. Modi said that in the short time of two and a half years, Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, CDRI, has taken important initiatives and made valuable contributions. In the short time of two and a half years, the CDRI has taken important initiatives and made valuable contributions. CDRIs work on strengthening the resilience of power system has already benefited communities in coastal India by reducing the duration of power disruption during cyclones. As this work progresses to the next phase, it can be scaled up to benefit over 130 million people who are exposed to tropical cyclones every year. It has the potential to contribute to the resilience of global connectivity. The global assessment of disaster resilience of infrastructure system that is being led by CDRI will help create global knowledge that would be immensely valuable. The International Conference on Disaster Resilient Infrastructure is an annual international conference and platform to continue building an engaged global community for disaster and climate resilient infrastructure. The initial public offering IP of Life Insurance Corporation of India LIC has opened for public subscription from Wednesday. It will remain open for subscription till 9th of May. LIC IPO is the biggest public offering in the country. The allotment of shares to the DMAT account of bidders will take place by 16th of May and the IPO will list for trading on 17th of May. An initial public offering IPO refers to the process of offering shares of a private corporation to the public in a new stock issuance. LIC has fixed the price band of 902 to 949 rupees per equity share for its maiden public offer. Investors can bid for a minimum of 50 15 equity shares and in multiples of 15 shares thereafter. The LIC has offered a discount of 45 rupees per share to retail and eligible employee category and 60 rupees per share to policyholder category. With this IPO, the government is looking to divest its 3.5% stake in the insurer by selling 22 crore 13 lakh shares. The government aims to raise around 21,000 crore rupees through IPO. LIC is recognized as the third strongest and tenth most valuable global insurance brand as per the Insurance 100 2021 report released by Brand Finance. LIC was also recognized by WPP Kantar as second most valuable brand in India in the report Brands Top 75 Most Valuable Indian Brands for 2018, 2019 and 2020. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The European Union said it will slap new sanctions on Russia for its military action against Ukraine, targeting Moscow's oil industry, more Russian banks and those responsible for disinformation. Joseph Borrell, head of the Foreign Policy Unit at the EU's Executive European Commission, said in a tweet that they are working on the sixth package of sanctions which aims to de-swift more banks, list disinformation actors and tackle oil imports. The latest round of sanctions would also affect 
Sebber Bank, Russia's top lender, diplomat said, adding it to several banks that have already been excluded from the SWIFT messaging system. Russian President Vladimir Putin put the West on notice on Tuesday that he could terminate exports and deals in response to the sanctions burden imposed on by the EU and the United States. An embargo on Russian oil would deprive Moscow of a large revenue stream, but reaching an agreement on the measure has divided countries off the bloc, which relies on Russia for 26% of its oil imports. Hungary and Germany were among those with reservations against an oil embargo. North Korea has launched a suspected ballistic missile towards its eastern waters on Wednesday, South Korean and Japanese officials said. It comes a week after North Korean leader Kim Jong-un vowed to bolster his nuclear arsenal at the fastest possible pace and threatened to use them against rivals. The launch, the North's 14th round of weapons firing, also came six days before a new South Korean president takes office for a single five-year term. The main opposition party in Sri Lanka has issued a no-confidence declaration. It has accused Prime Minister Mahinda Rajpaksa and his cabinet of failing in their constitutional duty to provide a decent living standard in the midst of a country's worst economic crisis in Mandi. The motion was delivered to Parliament Speaker Mahinda Yapa Abhivardhana by a group from the United People's Force Party led by leader Sajid Prem Dasa. The decision came amid nationwide protests calling for the resignations of Rajpaksa and his younger brother, President Gotbaya Rajpaksa, whom demonstrators blame for the economic crisis. India will be the official country of honor at the upcoming Marche du Film, organized alongside the Cannes Film Festival in France, a report. The festival will be organized from the 17th of this month. This was announced by Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur during a press conference in New Delhi, he said that France and India are marking 75 years of their diplomatic ties and the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Paris and meeting with President Macron takes even more significance in this context. Mr. Thakur said that it is in this significant diplomatic backdrop that India has been chosen as the country of honor at Marche du Film at the Cannes Film Festival. He said this is for the first time that such honor is being bestowed to any country. India will be the country of honor at Cannes Film Festival. This is the first time such honor is being bestowed to any country. So India will be officially country of honor at the upcoming March 2 film, which is organized alongside the Cannes Film Festival in France. The country of honor status thereby ensures India's presence as focused country at the opening night. India is also a country of honor at the Khan next. So on the opening night, whereas on one hand India can showcase its cinema, culture and heritage. On the other hand, as I said, India will be country of honor at the Khan's next, under which five startups would be given an opportunity to pitch to the audiovisual industry. Another highlight of the India's participation would be the world premiere of the movie Rocketry produced by R. Madhavan. The movie would be showcased in the Palai K of the market screening on the 19th of May. India has been given an opportunity to pitch five selected movies at the Goes to Khan section. These movies are part of the WIP lab under the Film Bazaar. A cinema hall called the Olympia Screen has been dedicated to India on the 22nd of May for screening unreleased movies. There are five movies which have been selected under this category. This year, the India Pavilion carries a theme, India, the content hub of the world. It would be inaugurated on the morning of the 18th of May. It will showcase Indian cinema across linguistic, cultural and regional diversities of the country and will serve as networking platform for delegates from across the global community. VC Pramod for World News, All India Radio. Beijing has further tightened curbs to cut off COVID-19 transmissions, suspending many public transport routes and ordering residents in Beijing's most populous Chaoyang district to start working from home on Thursday as the Labor Day holiday ends. City officials term the situation as grim, even the Chinese capital reporting just 51 new cases today. New case numbers in Beijing have hovered new, near 50 for many days as the city has seen 505 infections since 22nd of April. A report from the Business Desk. The Sensex lost 1307 points to trade at 55,669, while the Nifty declined 392 points to trade at 16,678. In the global share markets, 
Majority of the Asian stocks today witnessed losses. Hong Kong's Hang Seng declined 1.1%, Singapore's Trade Times ended 0.2% down, and South Korea's Kospi fell 0.1%. Trade did not take place in Japan's Nikkei 225 and China's Shanghai Composite Index. European share markets were down in intraday trade. Oil prices rose more than 4% after industry data showed drawdowns in U.S. crude and fuel stockpiles. In intraday trade, Brent crude was trading around $109.30 per barrel. And in the forex market, the rupee strengthened 24 paise against the U.S. dollar to close at 76 rupees and 42 paise. Veera Vikumar for World News All India Radio. Now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. Let us take a look at the press reports on China. Local media reports the Hong Kong economy posted a contraction of 4% on a yearly basis for the first quarter, advance estimates showed on Tuesday, ending a streak of yearly expansion over the previous four quarters amid weak demand both domestically and externally. State media reports quoting Beijing authorities that all kindergartens, primary and middle schools and secondary vocational schools in Beijing will postpone resuming classes for a week until May 11th. The date of reopening of schools would be decided based on the COVID-19 epidemic situation. Financial Times reports China Xiaomi shares dip after Indian authorities seize almost US dollar 730 million of assets. Now let's have a look at the press reports on Balochistan. Balochistan Post reports that students from various educational institutions of Turbat City of Kech District marched on various roads in the city through press club to record a protest against enforced disappearances in Balochistan. Now let's have a look at the press reports on Bangladesh. UN Special Advisor on the Prevention of Genocide Alice Varimu Deritu has said those who perpetrated vicious crimes against the Rohingya must be held accountable, reports Dhaka Tribune. Bangladesh State Minister for Information and Communication Technology Zuneid Ahmed Palak left Bangladesh for New York on an official visit. During the visit from May 4 to 14th, he would attend the Golden Jubilee Bangladesh concert to be held at Madison Square Garden in New York, reports New Age. Tesla chief Elon Musk has said that Twitter Inc. will always be free for casual users but may charge a nominal fee for commercial and government users. After adding the company to his cart recently, Musk said he wanted to enhance the platform with new features. Make the algorithms open source to increase trust, defeat spam bots and authenticate all humans. Last month, even before reaching a deal with Twitter, Musk had suggested few changes to the Twitter Blue premium subscription service. In IPL cricket, Royal Challengers Bangalore have set a victory target of 174 runs before Chennai Super Kings at Maharashtra Cricket Association Stadium in Pune. In reply, Chennai Super Kings were 155 for 8 in 19.3 overs when reports last came in. Earlier, Chennai won the toss and opted to field first. A quick look at the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reaches Paris to hold talks with French President Emmanuel Macron, after completing his Denmark visit, says France is one of India's strongest partners. Prime Minister Modi says India Nordic Summit is a great platform to discuss ways to boost ties with Nordic nations, terms Denmark visit as productive. IPO of Life Insurance Cooperation of India worth 21,000 crore rupees opens for public subscription. European Union to slap new sanctions on Russia for its military action against Ukraine. North Korea launched suspected ballistic missile towards its eastern waters. India to be official country of honor at upcoming Marche the Film organized alongside Cannes Film Festival in France. And now before we end, let us listen to Mahatma Gandhi's favorite bhajan, Vaishnav Jan by artists from Cyprus.
with that we end this bulletin we'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of world news 